the Czech Republic is preparing for a small name revolution. Until now, almost all female citizens had to add the three letters OVA to their surname. In future, Ms. Pagarova will be able to change her name to Ms. Pagar, Ms. Prdečkova to Ms. Prdečka. According to a survey, 28% of Prague women would like to remove the OVA ending from their surname. If I would marry a foreign guy, uh, I would be absolutely fine with uh, no OVA thing. Personally, I like my name the way it is. There is this suffix OVA, so I wouldn't change it. They should decide for sure which name they want to have. The main architect of this surname bill is Helena Valkova. The government commissioner on human rights highlights that the compulsory OVA ending has only existed since 1945. OVA is uh, something uh, as a uh, ownership. Uh, you know, Valek and I am Valkova. I belong to my husband, to my father or to somebody. In this case, is to my husband. And I think uh, the times um, that we have belonged uh, to husbands are over. Women married to foreigners have been one of the few exceptions to the compulsory OVA ending. The Language Institute of the Czech Academy of Sciences has mixed feelings about the new law, which will come into effect next January. Uh, some women think that uh, the OVA means belonging because uh, it's uh, similar uh, to possessive suffixes. Uh, uh, but uh, if it was uh, possession, then it would be OVA with a short A uh, at the end. And gender uh, is uh, uh, an obligatory grammatical category uh, in uh, nouns. Uh, so every noun is either masculine or feminine or neuter. Uh, and every uh, basic form of a surname uh, is a masculine. And if you want to use it as a feminine, you must necessarily add uh, the feminine ending. In 1890, writer Eliška Krasnohorska co-founded the first girls' grammar school in Austria-Hungary, here in Prague, thus making higher education possible for women. Now, 131 years later, Czech women can not only decide on their educational path, but also on their surname.